Welcome back to Centenary United Methodist Church YouTube Sunday School. So good to see you all again. Um, before we get started on our lesson today, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a special something that we have coming for the upcoming Advent season. Um, as you know, um, there will probably be um, some times during the Advent season where you will be, spend more time together as a family at home. Um, and we wanted to provide you with some opportunities to um, kind of celebrate and experience um, Advent at home. So we've developed what we call Advent in a Box. And it will be in that familiar pizza box that we've taken with Takeout Church before. And it will be um, in the... Um, um, it's the overhang part where you, if you have uh, children that you drop off for Mother's Morning Out, it will be in that area underneath the portico there to pick up um, beginning Thursday. The, um, and it will run until they're gone. There are 50 boxes and they have activities for your family to do throughout um, the Christmas season as we prepare and as we think about the coming of baby Jesus. Um, Advent means a preparation when we get ready for. Um, and if we remember, we're, we're, we're trying to prepare for baby Jesus to come. But also, this day and time, we're preparing also for Jesus to come back again. So, um, hope that you will pick one of those boxes up. They're only 50 again. And when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and they will be under the portico, and they will be something I hope that you and your family will participate in and enjoy using during this Advent season. It's um, simple things to do, nothing that takes um, a lot of time, but hopefully it will help you to reflect on what God has done in your life this year, what God has done in your family's life, and what we anticipate God doing for us as we move forward. So, that'll be out there for you. Now, today's lesson is about Samuel, and if you'll remember, we've been talking about the different judges um, and what has gone on during those times. Last week, we talked about Naomi and Ruth, and that was basically during the time of the judges um, when, when that story was, was told. Um, Samuel was said to be one of the last judges. I, I couldn't find that in the Bible, but... Um, he uh, worked for the priest. He had a very interesting, interesting life. His mother, Hannah, desperately wanted a child. She hadn't had Samuel yet. And she prayed to God and prayed to God and prayed to God. And he blessed her with a child. And in her prayers to God, she promised him that if he would give her a child, she would give that child back to him to work with the priest and that's what she did she gave him back to um, the priest and he worked with the priest Samuel also was the one a very important person in um, in the beginning of the kings of Israel um, the people decided that they were tired of having judges and they wanted a king like the other countries the pagan countries around them and God finally relented and told Samuel to go and anoint the first king, and that was Saul. And then Samuel went also and anointed the second king, who was David. So um, Samuel was a very, very, very important person in the transition time between the judges and the kings. So let's watch Samson. Samuel. As a young boy, Samuel was sent to help Eli the priest in doing the Lord's work. One night, Samuel ran to where Eli was sleeping. Samuel had heard someone call his name, and he thought it was Eli. I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed, but the voice called him two more times. After the third time, 
Eli knew that God was calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel that it must be God speaking. Next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. God told Samuel that he was going to punish Eli's sons because they were evil. Samuel grew up to be a godly man. A war broke out and God's people decided to take the holy box into battle. But this went against God's rules. Guess what? The enemy captured the holy box of God and took it home with them. God's people were sad. As soon as the enemy got the holy box of God home, bad things started happening to them. They wanted to get rid of it. They put the holy box in a cart pulled by two cows and sent it home. When God's people saw the holy box coming, they were so happy. The enemy wasn't quite through yet. They saw God's people meeting together and decided to attack them. The people begged Samuel to pray. When he did, God sent a thunderclap so loud, it frightened the enemy soldiers. Then God's people chased them away. So the the story um, went through part of what Samuel's life was, um, and if if we can go back and look at the very beginning when God called him and Eli the priest told Samuel that he needed to tell God, to, you know, that I'm listening. Here I am, um, and throughout Samuel's life, God spoke to him over and over again, and each time. Samuel responded that he was here. He was here to listen to what God asked him to do. And not only did he pray for the people in that instance, when and it was the holy box is what the video called it, but we all know that that was the ark. That was the um, the ark that Moses and, and um, the uh, Israelites had brought through the desert with them um, with instructions from God on how to, um, to um, build it. And it's supposed to have carried some of the manna, the actual food that God fed the people in with. It was supposed to carry um, evidence of that in there. You saw the two cherubim on the top of it that were protecting it. Um, so it, it really basically meant to the Israelites, it meant the presence of God. So that was a really big deal when, it, when the ark left in the hands of the enemy. And when it came back, it was incredibly important and special to them. But Eli, I mean, Samuel also listened carefully to God throughout all of this time and did as God asked him to do. And as he grew older, that's where um, Samuel, um, Samuel was called by God to go and find a man named Saul. And he um, anointed Saul, and Saul became the first king of the Israelites. And then as Saul went on throughout time, his time as king, he began his kingship as a godly man, which a lot of them did. But then as time went on, um, he walked away from God and he didn't follow the things that God asked him to do. And so Saul became increasingly um, not, he, he became increasingly um, not the man that God had called to be king. So Samuel was then called to go find the next king. And that's when he found David, the shepherd, and he anointed David as, as the king that would uh, follow Saul. And um, 
David didn't immediately take the, the throne, but after Saul's death, David took the throne. And of course, that was quite the adventure story too between David and Saul and David running from Saul too. Um, but we'll, we'll study more about um, David in next week. But um, I just wanted you to bring you up to date on, on Samuel and, and who he was and how important he was and how God takes unlikely people in unlikely places. And, I mean, Hannah was just an ordinary person that came in to the temple to pray, asking God to gift her with the son that she would give back, which she did. Um, and God took that young boy and, and used him in so many very important and powerful ways as the Israelites became a bigger and stronger nation. So um, I guess the lesson to learn from this is that we are never um, useless to God, no matter how small we may be, how unimportant we might think that we are, we're always useful to God. And during this Advent season, as we um, look and prepare ourselves for the coming of Jesus, why don't we look and think and meditate and pray about what it is that God's calling us to do. What is it that he has prepared for me to do? And it doesn't have to be anything big, but um, he has something for each and every one of us to do. And let's look and see what that might be. Y'all have a great week. Good to see you all. Blessings.